Hello again. Uh, we're doing the applications of the definite integral where we're calculating the area bounded by a certain amount of certain number of curves. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at absolutemathmax at yahoo.ca. Alright, so let's start with our example. Um, in, our, in our previous examples, we only had two curves, but now I've introduced four curves, which actually doesn't make this problem any more difficult, so you don't have to worry about it. Although we do have this graph here, and it doesn't necessarily make it harder, it's just you have to know how to graph these before you start these problems. So, um, remember we have to do a general graph of what this looks like so we know what area we're calculating, so let's start that. So we have y equals e to the 3x, so all that's going to look like is, and remember this is rough, so you don't have to worry too much, but basically it's just going to pass through like this. Alright, so anything like this will do, whatever, it's fine. And then we have x equals 1. So if this is 0, let's just say this is 1. So we're going to put a line through here. x equals 2, so we're going to put a line here. My sharpie's dying. And then we have y equals minus x. Well, when y equals x, it gives us a nice line like this. But because it's y equals minus x, we know that the line is actually going to be inverted like this. So let's put in that line. And as you can see, the area we want is, well, in this case it can actually be one of two, unless I drew my graph slightly wrong. Perhaps, maybe these ones shouldn't intersect, but, um, these ones, it's, it's this area anyways. All you have to know is, is that we want these areas. Alright, this area. So we're going to write our, our formula, the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x is equal to d of x. And as you can see, if you watched all the previous videos, this does get quite repetitive, so it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. So now what do we want to do? We want to introduce a rectangle, and we want to decide what rectangle do we want. Well, we can actually use both, but we're going to prefer one over the other, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, so I'm going to tell you right off the bat, and you should have guessed this, so I'll give you a second to think about it. Okay, we want horizontal, no, vertical rectangles, okay? So we want our rectangles to go like this. Well, why do we want this? Well, we can also use horizontal rectangles because as you can see, if you drew a whole bunch, the same rectangle wouldn't be touching the same, the bottom and top of the rectangle wouldn't be touching the same function. But what happens is that from here to here, if you drew rectangles, they're touching this function and this function, but then after that point, when you're drawing rectangles from here all the way to this point, now they're touching this function and a different function. And then after this point, they're actually touching this function and this function. And we haven't learned how to deal with those yet, and even if we knew how, and some of you might, it just makes the problem a lot more work where it doesn't have to be. Okay? But I promise in our next example we're going to have to do that and I'm going to show you how to do it. So if that's what you want, just skip to the next video. If not, let's just quickly finish this problem. Alright, so because we're using the vertical rectangles, we know we want to use x, right? Because it cuts through the x. So we need values of a and b in relation to x. Well, that's really easy because it tells us in the problem that x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. So that's 1 here and 1, 2, and that's exactly the bounds that we want for our integral. So we already have that. We can write that down. So a is 1, b is 2. So we have those. And then f of x, what is our upper function and what is our lower function? Well, if this is our rectangle, what function touches the top of our rectangle? Well, we can see it's this one. 
which I didn't write down, but you guys should know it's y equals 3x, right? Y, y equals e to the 3x. So let's write that down, e to the 3x. And you can see we have the x because that's what we need. It's in relation to x. And then we do minus the lower function, which is this one coming through here, which is y equals minus x, minus x. So this is where, what I'm talking about putting in parentheses because if you didn't put in parentheses, you might just write minus x, right? And then dx and that's it. But it's actually minus and put parentheses and then put it in minus x. So what that becomes is that you have the integral two to one e to three x minus minus is plus x. All right, dx. Um, so after you have that, if you guys want to solve for it, actually we can solve for it, it's kind of fun. It might make the video a bit longer, but this is, this is the final, that's your formula, that's how it should be, and, and it's just a matter of computing the integral now. So if you want to skip to the end, that's fine, I'm just going to solve it for those who want it to be solved, because we are using E, and some people might find that a bit more confusing. Alright, so let's do this. Uh, when we take the integral, we're going to have, when you take the integral of anything e, it's just itself divided by the derivative of the power. Alright, so the derivative of 3x is just 3, right? So you just divide by 3. And then plus, and you should know the integral of x is x squared divided by 2. And this is from 2 to 1 all of this. So if we continue computing that, we're going to get, let's replace 2, so we're going to get e to the 6 over 3, and then we're going to get 2 to the 2 is 4 divided by 2 is just 2, and then remember it's minus, so we get e to the 3 times 1, which is just e to the 3 over 3, and then we get minus 1 to the 2 is 1 over 2. So this is what we get, and we can simplify it a bit. And we get, let's see, e to the 6 over 3 minus e to the 3 over 3 plus 2 minus 1 half, so that's going to give us 1.5, and 1.5 is the same thing as 3 over 2, right? And then what we can do is we can just take out this 3 if you really want, it doesn't really matter, the 1 over 3 times e to the 6 minus e to the 3 plus 3 seconds. And that's going to be your final answer. If you really want you can bring out a calculator and calculate this, but it's your prof probably doesn't want that. I know in my calculus class uh, we, we weren't allowed to use calculators, so yeah. All right, so I'm going to do I'm going to be doing one more video and it's going to be on how to calculate um, the area when you actually your rectangle touches a different curve after. It might be a bit confusing, but just watch the next video and I'll explain how it works. Thanks.